Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for Telisco Learnings and in this video tutorial we're going to be taking an introduction to arrays in javascript so if you've seen the video of data types in javascript in this playlist arrays come under the category of composite or complex data types and basically arrays in javascript are a different type of object and i know we've not talked about objects so you'll understand that as we move ahead but before starting off with the arrays let's take a scenario here so as you can see on the screen i have three different variables car 1 car 2 car 3 and basically they are storing different brands of cars so for now you can see that we only have three different types of cars or three different brands of cars but in real world scenarios you know that there are many brands and this variable list can go on and on right or let's say for example in general your program requires that you need to have 100 different variables storing some values let's say there is a range of numbers that you want to store and you have to create 100 variables so at that time creating individual variables let's say a b c d and so on and so forth till you exhaust all the alphabets doesn't make sense right and let's say what if your program demands that you want to iterate or you want to loop through all these variables and you have to perform certain operations also so again that becomes more tedious so just imagine that you're creating 100 different variables and then you also have to remember the names and then you have to perform operations onto it and in real world scenarios yes you will be creating a lot of variables because your programs are not going to be like 10 line of code right it's going to be hundreds of lines of code so this is where arrays come into picture and what arrays help us do is you can store a multiple list of values under one single name now if you're coming from any other programming background the concept of arrays is pretty much the same however in javascript arrays work a little bit different because arrays are dynamic in nature here and you can have different data type of values in the arrays and we'll come to that in a minute you'll understand it very well but let's start off with representation of arrays and let's create an array in javascript so here you can see we have three basic variables now to replace these three variables i what i can do is i can say var cars i can say equal to opening and closing square brackets which means that it is an array so this is what indicates that it is an array and inside this i can say double quotes bmw comma double quotes volvo comma double quotes audi so as you can see on the right hand side over here the output is already printed because we are using the live server plugin and this is one single name so the array name is car so basically it is a composite data type variable who has one single name but it is storing a list of values right so instead of creating three different variables we just created one and we stored the entire list so this is one way of creating arrays in javascript now arrays in javascript are indexed and basically what it means that every value which is stored is at a position so it starts from 0 so bmw is at 0th position volvo is at position number 1 and audi is at position number 2 so this is how the indexing happens it starts with zero so if you want to individually access any value let's say you just want to access the first or the zeroth element that is the first element basically in the cars array what you do is in the output you just put in square brackets and you put the value that you want to access so if i put zero over here in the output you can see i got bmw if i put one you can see i'll get volvo if i put two you can see i'll get audi now this is a major advantage because now you can loop through this array using this index so let's say you want to print these values one line at a time so i can use a for loop over here now we've already seen what are for loops and different types of loops also so i'm going to say for i'm going to say where i equals to 0 i less than 3 because our index starts from 0 and it ends at 2 so it has to be i less than 3 and i'm going to say i plus plus and now what i'm going to do is just cut this and put it inside the curly braces you can actually exclude the curly braces if you have only one statement in the for loop so if i erase this even this is going to work but typically i don't do that but you can see now what i'm doing over here is if i just replace this two with i you can see i can get all the values starting from bmw volvo audi because i over here is iterating in the for loop so i value keeps on changing and every time we change the value we are getting a new value from the array so we are printing bmw first then volvo then audi so this is where you can access the values easily in loops also so let's say you have 100 values in the cars variable that is cars array you can easily use a for loop to access all the 
values and you can use this iteration concept of loops. So this is not possible if you are storing these values in individual variables, right? So this is one more advantage. Now there is another way in which you can create arrays. You can say where arr1 is equal to new. So this is a new keyword called as new. Obviously we'll talk about new in detail in further videos. And then you can say array and in opening and closing round brackets. You can put in the values if you want. So I'm going to say mango and then I'm going to say apple. Then I'm going to say banana and semicolon. And again, the same thing. If I want to print them, I can just change the name of the array, which is ARR1 and you can see the values change over here. So this is another way. Typically, this is not used. It's not recommended. This is the more easier way to create arrays. But let's say you want to declare it at first line. Let's say you just say ARR1 over here and now you want to make it an array. So at that time, you have to use the new keyword. You have to say ARR1 is equal to new array. And then inside this, you have to actually pass in the values. Okay, so these are the two different ways. We'll talk more in detail about arrays also. But few more things that I want to talk about over here is arrays, as I mentioned in JavaScript, are little different compared to Java programming or C++ because arrays are dynamic in nature. So when I say they are dynamic in nature, basically what I mean is you can add on extra values in the array at runtime, you know, so it's not a fixed sized array. It can always increase in length or decrease in length. And you can also add different data types. So what I can do is I can see cars dot push and I can add something else. So I can say Mercedes and when I loop through the for loop, I can increase the size. I can say four. And there you go, you can see I got one more value. So now you must be wondering what is this push? So as I mentioned earlier, arrays are different type of objects in JavaScript. And when we talk about objects, objects have certain properties and methods that come along with them. Okay. So since arrays are predefined in JavaScript, so you don't create arrays yourself, right? So everything that an array does is already there in JavaScript. So when you create an array, there are some methods that come along with the arrays and there are some properties also. So this dot push that is this method is an extra property that comes along with this array. Similarly, if you just type in cars and say dot, you can see the, all the number of methods that are associated with the arrays. So all the square or the cubes are basically the methods. And then there are some properties also. You can see this blue length thing. So this is a property. So we have properties and methods associated with arrays or any objects typically. So this length gives us the current length of the cars. So in the for loop, what I can do is instead of giving a static value, I can say cars dot length. And then by default, the length is going to be equal to the size of the array. Now the size of the array is the number of elements it has. So initially you can see that we had three elements, even though the index starts from zero. The size is going to be one, two and three elements. And then we added one more, right? So now the size is increased to four. So that's why whatever the size is by default, the size will come from over here. So if I just comment this out, now the size has decreased and the length value is going to be three over here. So it can dynamically increase or decrease over the course of time. One more thing that I mentioned is you can also add different data type values, right? So instead of adding a string, so right now we have four different strings, right? What I can do is I can add a number also. So let's say I just add two and there you go. You can see now the array is holding three strings and then we have a number two. So this is different because in C++ or Java, we know that arrays do not store different data types and then we have different data structures to do that. But arrays don't do that, right? But in JavaScript, it is dynamic also. That is the size can decrease and increase over the course of time. And it can also store different data types of values in one single array. Okay, so this was it for this video. I know we can talk a lot about arrays. We can talk about different methods. We can talk about sorting and all, but I don't want to put it all in this video. As we move ahead, we'll see some more examples wherein we can use arrays and we'll perform some operations also. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do let me know in the comments how this video was. Share it with your friends as well. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.